Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. On this episode, I'm speaking with Jeff Edwards and Scott May of Stratos Cloud Alliance, Velocio's Microsoft Partner Program. Scott has joined us before on podcasts and webcasts to talk about success in the Dynamics and the Microsoft channel. But this is the first time we get to speak with Jeff Edwards since he joined the team at Stratos Cloud. As he'll explain, Jeff has a long and important history with Dynamics products and with Microsoft. He worked at the company for many years, helping shape some of the most important policies and programs related to business applications. This episode is sponsored by Stratos Cloud, and both Jeff and Scott share their views on what partner success looks like in today's business applications landscape. There are some attractive incentives from Microsoft and from Stratos Cloud for indirect partners that Scott and Jeff will explain. There are also some important technology advances in the Microsoft channel, and developing vertical expertise also remains an important element of the channel opportunity. Scott and Jeff have some advice on ways partners can accelerate their progress there. We also discuss Microsoft's new fiscal year and what partners should be watching for in July, from Microsoft leadership changes to licensing and program updates. All right. Well, Scott May, Jeff Edwards, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us, Jason. Great to be here. Yeah, great to have you. And uh, Scott, glad to have you back. Jeff, uh, welcome for the first time to the podcast. It's been a while since we've talked. Some people might have seen the headline that we had and, and that was out there that you had joined Velocio and, and in a new role. So I guess it's sort of a chance to say welcome back to the Microsoft channel because you re- really and truly have been sort of out of uh, the Microsoft space for a few years. Can you, uh, for anyone who doesn't know you, can you give a little bit of background on a little bit of your career history and how it sort of fits into the Microsoft channel? Yeah, sure. Uh, I spent many years at Microsoft, approximately 17. I came over in 2000 uh, with the acquisition of Great Plains. So I'd done about uh, a year at Great Plains before Microsoft acquired Great Plains. So I do go back a long way. Some portion of that early career was uh, ERP product management and marketing, but probably the last 10 years at Microsoft was basically doing the global uh, Dynamics Partner Strategy and Program. So I ran that effort from a global perspective, started up you know, the original CSP, uh, and in relation to this job, kind of started MasterVar with both QBS in Europe and what was then SBS and Socius in North America, where I got to know these guys. Of course, Velocio is the combination of SBS and Socius and a, num- and a number of other firms. So great to be back. As you mentioned, Jason, I was, at, uh, I was at Financial Force for close to three years in the Salesforce ecosystem, but the opportunity to come back and more or less kind of execute what I promoted from a Microsoft perspective on the partner side uh, was too good to pass up. So uh, great being back in the Microsoft ecosystem. Obviously, lots of friends. I'm still up in the Seattle area. So I think really driving CSP and transitioning this channel and this company to to more pure cloud is a great opportunity. And really, Microsoft has just made amazing progress in the last three years from a product perspective, from a program perspective. So I think it is now kind of down to execution inside the channel and with Microsoft. All right. Excellent. Yeah. I really look forward to uh, really getting into a few of those details here as we move ahead. And Scott, for anyone who doesn't know you, can you uh, just introduce yourself as well? Yeah, great. Thanks, Jason. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, yeah, I'm the director of uh, channel development, and I've been working with the you know, Stratos Cloud Alliance for about the past 10 years. But I, too, like Jeff, has been in the Microsoft channel ecosystem for about the last 25 years, uh, working with you know, SBS Group, Socius to form Velocio. And I've been working you know, with partners you know, in the indirect channel model for about the past 10 years starting out with the Master VAR program and working with Master VAR partners and helping them that grow their business. And now for the past three years as a, you know, Stratos Cloud Alliance as an indirect provider, working with CSP partners via the indirect model and helping them get going, uh, transitioning from on-premise, you know, into the cloud. So, uh, you know, again, it's an exciting time. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on and it's great to have yeah, Jeff uh, participating with us now with all of his experience and expertise to you know help us and help our partners grow even faster. 
Jeff, going back to what you said, sort of describing your role today and how it fits in with the work you'd even um, done in past years and really shaping some of the strategic direction of the channel for business applications at Microsoft and how that continues now. I probably couldn't have described it any better. I thought that was great. And um, I thought maybe it would be nice to start with the most current and sort of the present and looking ahead a little bit. And then maybe we'll end up working our way sort of back into some of the... uh, the recent history as well. But what are some of the new promotions, new incentives that are top of mind for each of you right now that they're important both for for Stratus Cloud Alliance and, and Velocio, but also, you know, to the partners that you both work with in the channel who work with you, who work with Microsoft right now. What are you what are you talking to them about? What are you in either paying attention to or, or encouraging partners to uh, take part in right now? Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, take that, Jason. I mean, you know, I think, you know, the first thing is, you know, just ensuring, you know, what promotions are, you know, out there and available, right? Microsoft has so many different, uh, you know, programs, whether you're managed partner, unmanaged partner, they've got the, uh, you know, what they call PI or partner investment engine. And you really need to understand kind of, you know, which ones fit your go to market scenario, if you will, and then go out and, you know, basically promote it uh, to help you go through and close those opportunities that you're working on. So, you know, here in the fourth quarter of Microsoft's fourth quarter, obviously, since they end on uh, June 30th, uh, you know, one of the biggest promotions to help partners is the enhancement plan renewal via CSP, which we've been helping partners with. You know, that program is really where, you know, an on-premise dynamics client can renew their enhancement plan via purchasing, you know, CSP licensing and get dual use rights of, you know, both their systems that helps them start their process to transition into the cloud, doesn't force them to have to move to, you know, the Microsoft, uh, you know, cloud solution at that point. You know, that's one of the things that we're helping partners promote. You know, we help our partners stay abreast of, you know, all of those different promotions by having, you know, monthly partner meetings where we cover that with everybody. We have partner development managers that, you know, help our partners uh, make sure they understand what's available and how they can use them on the opportunities we're engaging them with. You know, we communicate that via our Yammer partner platform, as well as our marketing programs that we have in our marketing uh, you know, portal, if you will, to help them market those to their existing clients. And there's also a lot of, you know, uh, dynamics, you know, migration opportunities that are out there. So, you know, the EP via CSP, which is you know, the term for the, the promotion, that's a 60% discount on Dynamics, you know, uh, 365 Business Central licenses. There's migration promotions that are out there where clients can get up to a 40% discount for moving over to Dynamics 365 licenses. There's also other programs. Uh, there's a Better Together program where basically packaging up Microsoft 365, along with D365 licenses, are is available. And certainly, you know, that's what we talk with partners about is really marketing the whole Microsoft, you know, cloud platform, not just one solution, if you will, but, you know, how the whole platform works together from, you know, Azure and M365 and D365 combined. And that's what that promo is for. There's also a promotion out there for uh, Dynamics 365 uh, sales professional or customer service professional licenses, you know, where a client can get, you know, 100% discount for the first four months of the licensing of those solutions. And, you know, those are great opportunities for, uh, you know, MSP partners to get involved and sell those to their clients, uh, Dynamics partners that haven't been doing, um, you know, let's say CRM licensing an opportunity to go through and kind of upsell, cross-sell. You know, there's customer ad opportunities at this point with Microsoft where there's different customer ad uh, targets. And if you hit those, there's additional bonus margin, uh, you know, that partners can receive for achieving those. You know, so we, we kind of go through and tell our partners, you know, hey, let us know and we can make sure we're helping identify if there's a a promotion that's out there that they can benefit from or that they can pass along to their clients, obviously, to help them close those opportunities. And, and you know, we as an indirect provider, too, we provide incentives, you know, to our partners. You know, there are some changes going on within the Microsoft cloud 
kind of, you know, whether you're a direct or an indirect partner. And so some partners are having to move to the indirect model. Uh, we're an offering an incentive to those indirect partners to keep them at our highest partner margin level uh, to help them with that transition, help them move those CSP licenses, you know, and then they don't have to meet all the Microsoft requirements, obviously. And then we have other incentives for new partners who join us who want to get into D365. Uh, you know, we have got a margin kickers on, you know, getting their first new, new deal closed with us within 30 days. For IMACP partners, uh, you know, we have a promotion because we're an IMACP sponsor to start those folks out at a higher margin level. So there's, there's all types of things that uh, Microsoft is doing as well as we are as an indirect provider to help our partners, uh, you know, maximize the return on investment and margin that they're getting, Jason. When it comes to some of these Microsoft incentives, kind of taking all of them into account or maybe the most important ones, what does it say to either of you about Microsoft's priorities? I mean, I always look at incentives as one of the most clear ways that they can state their priorities. Is there anything that either jumps out as, you know, particularly important or things that, uh, that you see shifting? I would say it's just super clear to the cloud as fast as possible. I think the level of ease that's being provided in transitioning from on-prem to cloud the amount of incentive that goes into getting new customers in the cloud and in the CSP program is really striking as, as somebody coming back uh, after a few years out. So through partner with partner model and, and the amount of focus on the CSP program, both indirect and direct, you can, you can certainly see the uh, emphasis on both transition and new customer purely into the cloud model. And I also think that, you know, the effort going back 15, 20 years, how do we enable MSPs that traditionally do platform, infrastructure, office to promote and deliver dynamics? And really, at this point, vice versa as well. Traditional dynamics partners, how can you deliver more value and get more revenue and share of wallet with the customers by doing Azure, by doing BI? Power platform and power apps is a kind of a really new and interesting way to make money from a services perspective business process automation. So you see a company like ServiceNow, you know, really growing substantially in the enterprise space. We have that with Microsoft and Power Apps uh, and the platform as well. But I think really taking that into SMB and the mid-market as well as a partner opportunity for services, uh, really kind of business processes uh, kind of come up and evolve constantly. So more increased value, both in share of share of re revenue for the spend on that, but as well as consulting services and consulting hours that partners can apply to that as well. In your experience, do partners today need a lot of those incentives or do they more need to be sort of sold on the vision of where things are headed in the enterprise space? I think partners would largely tell you both, right? I mean, uh, there is a transition from a profitability perspective in terms of going from a you know sub substantial upfront payment as well as a larger upfront projects to more of an agile approach and basically of course a subscription model so anything we can you know Microsoft can do in terms of filling that gap both with a share of the of the margin on the software and the subscription as well as creating kind of the buzz in the marketplace i i, I would say that you know, that's another thing over the last three years that is remarkably better. And you look at it reflected in the stock price, right? But Microsoft is certainly seen as a leader in going to the cloud, right? It's kind of a, from an apps perspective, probably a Salesforce and Microsoft race from a cloud perspective, a, a AWS and Microsoft race. But basically, Microsoft is at the top of the list, really, in any of those categories you talk about from apps to infrastructure to security, which is a big one right now, to app to cloud app development and process automation, been successful. And I think we'll continue to be successful in saying, hey, this is now kind of a platform battle, right? And people are picking platforms. And Microsoft is uh, right there at the top as an obvious choice. And also, uh, from a very long uh, term perspective, channel friendly and channel reliant. So I, I think both of those things, both the, as you mentioned, Jason, are, is Microsoft at the top of the strategy kind of seen as a leader? Certainly, does the channel still need kind of incentives and financial help? I, I guess a financial cut in payment for efforts made, right? Because you take that 
kind of strategic vision and value and land it with specific customers and, and the impact to specific customers, vertically specific, process specific is what the channel's always done and has always been critical in kind of making that vision and direction clear on a customer by customer basis. And that costs money at the end of the day, right? I mean, uh, that's sales and pre-sales and marketing effort. So the channel cut of that is, is both justified and Microsoft's been doing that for a long time. So they certainly see the value. And Jason, you know, one thing I'd like to kind of add into that, right? You know, maybe a year ago or a little more, you know, I was getting more questions about, you know, hey, how's it, you know, am I going to be profitable in moving this? And, you know, the incentives were maybe a, uh, a bigger, you know, driver, if you will. But, you know, now we're seeing, you know, I think like 48% growth in partners, you know, within CSP, uh, you know, from Microsoft over the last, uh, you know, year, we're seeing that same type of growth, you know, within the Stratos Cloud Alliance. You know, there's lots of validation of the growth of, you know, the dynamic solutions, right? You know, I think in a recent meeting I was on just for Dynamics uh, 365 Business Central, I think there's now 15,000 plus Business Central clients. So, you know, the market, you know, is growing rapidly for that and, you know, partners are seeing that. And, and I think part of it is as well, which, you know, we help partners with is not only the, uh, the margin and the incentives, but the ability to do it. And do they have the resources to be able to jump into it? And, and that's really where, you know, we've helped partners get into Dynamics 365 and just the overall Microsoft cloud platform by offering them, you know, services to support them getting into it without them having to go through and, you know, have it all built on their own. Just like Jeff was saying, we, we help with pre-sales, uh, certainly across Dynamics 365, but also with Azure and M365 and the Power Platform. The partner doesn't have the resources to be able to, you know, effectively implement those solutions to their clients or net new ads. You know, then we can go through and, and provide that to them and it all works through them as a partner. And then some partners, you know, don't want to provide the support. We have support options. So we've been seeing partners that were hesitant to jump in, you know, in the last year, seeing the changes and the growth with the CSP and, you know, the margins and the incentives that they're just, they're, they're getting off the fence, if you will, now at this point. When it comes to partners that are coming into the CSP fold over, I don't know, maybe right now, maybe over the last year, I imagine they come in with different existing skill sets, different things that are already comfortable with, that they're good at, but then things that you are also then encouraging them or helping them on board with. Are there particular paths or particular profiles that are common that you see? I'm thinking of, I don't know, coming in with a, a deep Office 365 skill set or a particular, maybe an industry focus, but with a focus on other types of enterprise systems, not a dynamics. Are there particular profiles like that? Yeah, we're kind of seeing, you know, three main profiles, right, as you're getting at. Yeah, you know, we're we're seeing Dynamics partners, obviously, who we work with a long time uh, that are starting to move, you know, their on-premise clients into the cloud, obviously, that are working with us. But as Jeff had mentioned before, we're also working with those partners to, you know, help them sell across the entire Microsoft, uh, you know, cloud platform, if you will, right? And so that's what they're interested in is getting out of being just myopic on ERP, but also being able to go through and do office productivity, do cloud with Azure, and, you know, really expand their footprint with, you know, their existing client base. Again, that makes them stickier with their client. That gives them that opportunity to be even more profitable and increase their ROI. And then you've got the MSP partners who, may have a good base of clients on uh, Azure or Office, but haven't typically gone through and been offering, you know, business applications. So they're starting to see the growth in that and their clients asking for it. And so we're seeing partners, you know, come on board with us for CSP in that model to go through and kind of the exact opposite, as uh, Jeff was saying, of the Dynamics partner. You know, they're looking to go through and take advantage of the growth in the dynamic solutions and increase their monthly reoccurring revenue with their existing client base and create that stickiness. And we always basically talk to partners about making sure that you're talking to your clients, you know, about, you know, the entire Microsoft cloud stack, because if you're not, 
you know, there might be another partner it is, and you may lose your seat, you know, at the table with that client. And then we are starting to go through and see what I call competitive, basically ERP, CRM partners, right, that are seeing the growth. They might be doing, you know, a NetSuite or an Intact or uh, even, you know, Salesforce, uh, you know, that are starting to see the growth within the Microsoft cloud solution stack based upon, uh, you know, the, the performance, as Jeff had mentioned, of their stock. Uh, them beating their basically uh, revenue projections, you know, quarter over quarter. And so we're starting to see those types of partners get interested in, you know, getting into being part of the Microsoft cloud platform and not getting left behind. And, you know, all of those have, you know, what we call a different starting point, Jason, right? And that's kind of where we work with partners to understand where they're at and then help them get on a partner enablement journey that helps them to go through and expand into those other areas, whether it's D365, uh, you know, for a lot of partners, or whether it's getting into Azure and, uh, you know, M365 and the productivity solutions. You know, we've got enablement programs and different partner journeys that we start to work with partners on to get them up to speed in those areas. We've got marketing campaigns and programs that we put together that they can start using through us to you know, automatically go out and start marketing to their existing client base, which is typically where we start, right? Because it's easier to market to your existing clients and to expand that opportunity. And then we also work with them to then move to uh, you know, starting to generate more net new uh, logos, if you will, and helping them to close those, those business opportunities as well. I know we have, uh, at this time of year, you know, with Microsoft's fiscal year ending and the new one beginning, for anyone like like the two of you and, and myself, when you watch and pay attention to what Microsoft's doing, it certainly feels like a new year in a sense and a new sort of a new beginning or reset or whatever you want to call it. Do you sense that, well, either for your own company or, or for partners that you work with, that it's treated as sort of a new year and a new beginning in that sort of, you know, July time frame? And does that actually help the lead managers, owners to reset, reform their their approach, their direction to make some of these changes that you've been talking about? Yeah, it, it is the beginning of a new year for Microsoft. There's new leadership, new strategies. They want to make their imprint and, and kind of uh, go after the strategic direction and execution that's uh, highest priority to them. So as a channel, as a partner ourselves, where are they investing? What are the messages that, that they're going to tell? Uh, how do we support those messages and leverage those messages and investments to, to drive our own business? So not paying any, any attention to that or not getting a full understanding of where they're going to go, you're just not putting yourself into a position to fully benefit from that. And the, uh, it's, a, it's a large machine and an elephant, but uh, when it moves with purpose and intention, we can certainly get some benefit out of that. So, so we pay attention to Inspire and the announcements that come out of that and make sure we position ourselves in such a way to take advantage and allow our, our partners from an indirect perspective with Stratus Cloud Alliance to take, care, to take advantage of those uh, opportunities as well. Sure, it makes sense. And I do look forward to reconnecting with both of you after Inspire. It is always such an important point in time. I mean, one of the things that, that comes to mind for me from covering past Inspire events and Worldwide Partner Conference before that was it seems like it's a good chance for partners to sort of take a measure of people who are, as you said, transitioning into or out of various roles at Microsoft, which is fairly common at the beginning mm-hmm. of the year, right? That is when changes tend to take place and trying to understand how some of those people will work in some of the roles or in some of the working towards some of the goals that already exist. Are there any particular things you're looking for either personnel wise or I don't know, performance and sort of policy wise that you recommend people keep an eye on heading into Inspire? You know, I'd say with Gabriella moving on and uh, both Nick and Rodney uh, are going to have their ideas, Rodney Clark, on where to take the partner ecosystem, kind of getting a Nick Parker as well, obviously, getting their their view, I think they'll probably, I, I would assume some fairly significant changes there and uh, a new strategic vision. That's a big change, right? Kind of the channel chief for Microsoft. So really getting their a sense of where they're thinking to take the channel and the priorities for them. That's, a, that's kind of a once every four, five, six year change. And, you know, we're in the middle also of the transformation of the, of the business from a cloud perspective as well. So I think this will probably be kind of a, more impactful or a more uh, 
interesting inspire given the the changes in people uh than than we've had for a few years yeah and jason i know uh you know there's a new commerce platform that's uh, going to be you know be rolling out in the uh first part of microsoft's new fiscal year and we're one of the pilot partners you know working with them on that so there's going to be changes there which you know there'll be new licensing options and changes you know within the csp you know i know last year they started rolling in on-premise licensing into this csp model and i think you know they'll continue to roll in more of that on-premise licensing to be available through csp as well so you know again with the new year comes not only new changes in personnel but programs uh you know that partners are going to have to go through and stay abreast of and and that's one of the things that we do for our partners is to make sure that you know we're staying abreast of those with Microsoft and communicating those changes to our partners so that they can go through and be kept up to speed and then obviously you know working our relationships to make sure that uh, we're maximizing any incentives or program changes and leveraging those with you know the partners that we're working with so uh, we obviously have a very close and tight relationship with Microsoft and, you know, continue to evaluate those changes and making sure that we're staying connected. That's going to benefit our partners in the end. All right. Excellent. Plenty to look forward to. So I really do look ahead to comparing notes with you once again in, uh, in not too long, in just a few weeks, I suppose here. Perhaps that's a good place to start wrapping up. Anything else you wanted to call attention to before we, before we wrap up today? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that you know we continue to work with partners on Jason, and I know Microsoft continues to promote it, you know, as well is is really going through and, and becoming industry focused, right? I know Microsoft has its uh, own different industries that they say they focus on um, being vertical or industry focused. We see continues to go through and provide benefits to those partners who are able to. To do that in the essence of uh, increased profitability, opportunities to gain more new, you know, client ads. And, you know, we're really trying to help partners who want to go vertical, you know, that haven't been, right? So, you know, we've also got the relationships with probably 50 plus different, you know, ISV solutions that our partners can sell through us. Uh, Everything from kind of what I would call point solution, like a payroll now by integrity data, all the way to full-blown vertical solutions, uh, such as, you know, for the professional service automation industry. You know, there's solutions that we offer, such as advanced project accounting that, uh, you know, allow partners to, you know, actually go after a vertical uh, if they want to. And we've got all of the expertise within those vertical solutions uh, to help from a pre-sales perspective to, you know, a deployment solution expertise, if you will, for consulting and implementation. And, uh, you know, there's other verticals uh, within distribution and manufacturing that we help partners get into with the expertise that we have. There's also other solutions such as uh, association management and not-for-profit. And so, you know, as we bring partners in, not only are we helping them kind of understand uh, the the solutions in the Microsoft Cloud stack, but they're not verticalized already. Uh, you know, is there an opportunity to help them go after a vertical market? Because we just see that becoming more and more important to remain you know competitive. And most partners that uh, we talk to haven't necessarily you know verticalized themselves or focused on an industry. And you know, we think that's important for partners to do going forward to to be able to differentiate themselves and to be able to remain competitive in the, uh, you know, in the cloud market space. Yeah. I'd, I'd add on, you know, to that point is the, you know, my contacts inside of Microsoft, we've talked about being vertically or industry specific as a company for quite a while. And everything I'm hearing is people are really doubling down on that. You know, we, there's industry specific clouds on the Azure side. There's more of a go to market by industry, the sales teams, are being organized by industry as well. So I think more now more than ever, Microsoft is actually walking the walk as opposed to just talking the talk. So if you want to take advantage of the go-to-market activities, increasingly that's going to be aligning yourself to the industry and vertical go-to-markets that Microsoft funds and encourages as well. So if you want to get the tailwind on that, aligning yourself to that model is really is really critical. Right. And another thing I'm just watching for in the same 
you know, theme, I guess, is what's the correlation between sort of project success and industry specialization? I think that's more of a long-term question, but I mean, in addition to all those things you mentioned, that's certainly something that's kind of on my radar uh, when it comes to deploying uh, business apps for Microsoft. Yeah, I, th- I think you basically sell this describing the business outcomes and business outcomes are vertical at the end of the day, very different business outcomes you're trying to drive in a distribution business versus a professional services business. So you you talk about things in those terms and it quickly becomes a vertical conversation. All right, excellent. Thank you both so much for taking the time today. As I said, I look forward to chatting again really soon. Jeff Scott, really appreciate your time. Thanks, Jason. Great talking to you too. Thanks, Jason. This has been another episode of the MSDW Podcast. My thanks once again to Jeff Edwards and Scott May for joining me today. To learn more about Stratus Cloud Alliance, visit www.dynamics365partner.com to learn about their partner offerings. If you want to get in touch with me, you can reach me by email, jgumpert at msdynamicsworld.com. We're always looking for feedback and ideas on future shows. You can also follow us on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World, signing off.